Good morning. Welcome to Marty's Tying Bench. Today we're tying a, a little D-rib golden stone fly. Uh, this is for the Rocky Mountain Flycasters Pub and Dub for October of 2021. Our little social fly tying get together. Lots of golden stones in the Poudre River and the Big Thompson, so uh, this is a good pattern to have in your pocket. Something you can tie quickly and consistently and have some fun with. Tying it on a size 10, golden stones are going to be lots of different sizes, so 10s, 12s, even 8s. Um, this is Barbless Hook, a Montana Fly 7026 KBL. I've got a 1 8 inch bead, and I'm going to help get some weight and some shape to the thorax with some lead wire, 0.025, and I'm going to use 10 wraps. And the reason I'm counting wraps is for consistency's sake, because that's going to put the back of that lead coil right in the middle of the working part of the hook, and it's going to really help my proportions with this stonefly. It's it's too easy to crowd the thorax up towards the bead. You want a good, distinct thorax on these stoneflies. Thread's 140 denier, yellow, uh, any shady yellow. The 140 denier is important because we are going to use it to shape a little bit, so you want something with a little bit of bulk. I got just some regular old spandex. It can be yellow. This one is kind of an amber. <clears throat> Stretch it a little bit as you tie it back and try and keep it on top of the hook and then when you get to the back start forward before you lighten tension and that'll give you a pretty good fork in the tails. <clears throat> Cut them a little bit long because you're going to need you're going to appreciate having a handle to stretch them and, and mark them with a marker here at the end. Alright now I'm going to install some D-rib For this size, I'm still using nymph size. If I was to tie this in at 8, I would move up to what they call a medium. But this one looks pretty good with the nymph size. Now the inside of this coil is flat. And I want to tie the flat side to the hook. I'm spinning my thread to keep it. You see how it kind of flattened out? I don't know if you can see that yet. I'm going to come back almost to the tails. Then I'm going to shape it with thread wraps until it's a nice even gold. You don't need to you don't want a distinct taper to this. I just want to gradually build it up so it's the same size around as the lead coils. When you start forward just take a look and make sure you got the round side of the D-rib out. The D it's called D-rib because in cross section it's flat on one side and round on the other just like the letter D. <laughs> so I'm moving forward to the halfway point And now I'm going to install our wing case. And this is thin skin. Lots of different colors you can use. I've got uh, just I just like it modeled. I can use an olive, I can use kind of a brown. Tie that in on the top. Now we're going to go to dubbing. And for dubbing, I've got a. This one happens to be Life Cycle. This one says 
caddis yellow, there's a stonefly gold, there's a bunch of shades of it. They all look good on on golden stones. I'm going to build up a little bit of a base. And this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go through several times with dubbing as we install our legs. Then I'm going to come back to the middle and go ahead and make a few wraps. So it will make it more secure when I tie in the legs. Again, I'm tying them exaggerated. They're very long because I'm going to use extra as a handle. And by separating it in here, got, it just makes the legs look better if they come out from different parts. We're already, we're already asking the fish to ignore the fact that there are four legs instead of six. So I'll get this That dubbing in front is not important. It just I just happen to have too much dubbing, so go ahead and wrap. And then I'm going to come back and that gap in between the legs, I'll need some more dubbing. Case over. And tie the whip finish. Now underneath this whip finish is some dubbing and some lead, so and this is not the tightest knot. What head cement would be a good idea is what I'm getting at. For now I'm going to use multiple whip finishes. Okay, now for the art part. Typical Sharpie. Gonna stretch stretch the legs. And now they're speckled. Having that extra length on there will keep a lot of brown off of your finger. I like these little light speckles and fine speckles rather than a big broad one. You just want just a, a bit of contrast on the legs. Now you're going to cut the legs to the uh, size you like. You can leave them really long or just get them a little more Stubby. I'm going to go with stubby on this one. So there you go. Just a little sp oh, i got one more little trick with this brown. If you come up here in color, you can darken up the back of it. Still yellow on the bottom, brown on the back. And then come up and just wipe with your finger till you get a nice mottled look. 
Now it's supposed to be permanent ink, but it doesn't stick very well on vinyl, so eventually that's going to wear off. If we weren't in a pub, I'd put a little bit of clear cure goo on there or uh, uh, Loon Flow and harden it up, and that would protect that ink. So there you go, a little golden stonefly.